Okay, well, if you've seen the last two videos, I've outlined the restoration process of the IBM PC. But there's one thing I didn't cover. The MFM hard disk drive, shown here, um, is one of the least reliable pieces of technology ever created. Um, these hard drives were very prone to failure, and they would lose their sector map over time. And once that happens, the drive can no longer be formatted using MS-DOS. Um, it must be low-level formatted. Um, the process for doing such a thing is a little hairy. Um, the first thing you've got to do is access the controller's internal BIOS. An MFM controller has a built-in BIOS that can be accessed either through a third-party utility, I'm sorry, a, a utility that you install or run from a floppy disk, or from um, certain keystrokes, but that's not the case here. For this one, I had to access it using the debug command in MS-DOS, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and fire it up. When I first um, realized I had to low-level format my drive, it wasn't until after I had formatted it. When I got the machine, it was running perfectly fine. Um, but it did have some personal data from the original owner, which I decided I should just wipe it clean, reinstall DOS, and be done with it. It wasn't that simple. What ended up happening was I had to... Um, I was starting to get errors. Um, at the very end of the format process. I knew it was a 306 cylinder drive. At 306, the format failure error came up. I'm like, oh crap, I've got a problem. So I did some research. I found that my, um, my drive's controller was a Western Digital WD-102S-WX2A Revision 7. So I did a quick Google search, and this is what I came up with. This is basically the jumper settings and all specifications for the controller. And at the very end, it actually shows how to access the internal um, low-level format utility. In fact, here it is. So, I went into DOS by booting it from my uh, DOS 3.3 boot disk. I'm going to show you right now how to do it here. Um, I'm going to run the debug command by typing in debug. Enter. And then type in G equals C800 colon 5. Hit enter. And it launches it right from the, the uh, adapter's BIOS. Copyright 1986, so that tells me that most likely this machine was upfitted with a hard drive at some point in 1986 or 87. It is my guess that at that point the NEC V20 chip was installed. Um, it looks like there was a lot of work done to this system around that time period, uh, so I, I, it almost makes sense. So if I hit enter to return, or I'm sorry, return. It sets the interleave, and then it asks me if I'm dynamically configuring the drive. It's at this point that I'm not going to do anything else. Um, essentially, what we're looking at here is the, the drive geometry. When you um, dynamically configure the drive, it'll prompt you for the entire drive's geometry, including landing zone, number of cylinders, number of heads, list goes on, and even the stepper interval. Um, many of those I left to the default settings, but the cylinders had to be entered in manually. Now the problem is, a drive like this is difficult to find information for. The company has been bought and sold so many times, it's probably, been, it's probably merged with some company that doesn't exist anymore. It's an IMI. 
and um, I had to go searching all over the web for information on my drive. Western, I'm sorry, Seagate drives typically have all that information printed on the drive's label, but in my case, that was not so. So we're going to go ahead and restart the machine. Maybe play around with it a little bit. Another thing about these older drives, this is a five and a quarter inch double platter, um, full height drive with an MFM or modified frequency modulation interface. They're a little finicky. Um, there's a couple of things you need to know about stepper drives. Before, if you happen to buy one of these machines or any machine of this vintage, you will have a drive with a stepper motor. The difference between a stepper motor and a voice coil drive, like most equipment has now, um, the stepper motor drive moves the head in fixed positions. On a voice coil drive, it's like an infinitely variable position. What this means is that in order for it to work properly, in fact, I'll draw this out for you. I must have some paper here somewhere. Okay, let's say this is our disk, and these little concentric rings are cylinders, and these are blocks, these, uh, these cubes here, think of it as a big pizza, okay. In order for the data to be read to the drive and written from it, written and read to the drive, um, the head must fall exactly in the correct blocks. On a stepper motor drive, the head can only be positioned in the track positions as you see them. So it locks in here and then locks in here. On a voice coil drive, the head can be moved in between, it can be moved anywhere like this. So it basically looks like this as it's reading. So let's say the, the tip of the pen is the head. Here we go. It's reading and writing and reading and writing and it's having fun. On a stepper motor, it's like this. What this really translates to is as metal expands and contracts very slightly, the track positions change. On a stepper motor drive, it cannot comp compensate for that. Which is why many times an older machine like the old IBM PC will fail to start up. Or the drive will fail to format because it was formatted at a different temperature. <laughs> this is real stuff here. Um, so sometimes simply leaving them running for a little while will get everything warmed up, the plates, the platters will start to expand, and you should be able to read and write to the drive like you normally would. Um, but another problem with these old drives is they use a very, in, a very poorly made um, media coating on the platters. It's actually iron oxide, which tends to mar and ship fairly easy, not ship, but it, it, it's very easily damaged by the heads. So over time, another thing is it loses magnetism. So what has to happen is you need to low level format the drive after about five or six years to bring it back to life again. And that is why my machine was not able to format because the more readily used portions of the disk were fine but as I got into the outer edges, like right up in this area, a 306 cylinder, there was no more magnetism or something. And um, by low level formatting it, you basically relay every track and uh, it brings the disc back to the way it was in 1985 when it was made. I hope this has helped some of you understand uh, the older disc technologies. If you have any questions, please ask.